Hey, uh, my name is Michael Young, and um, I want to say a big hello to the uh, Tegulio uh, Design District. Um, it's nice to be involved in uh, global events and be invited to do things like this. Uh, makes me feel part of the global design community, which we are all very much part of now that we work from around the planet. Uh, I'm calling from the UK at the minute, or speaking from the UK rather. <clears throat> I came over to the uh, Milan Salone to see the uh, Furniture Fair and launch some products in September. Um, and uh, I guess I've been working here ever since due to border closures and restrictions. And it's actually been uh, an incredibly positive experience. Um, though it was daunting at the beginning, um, you know, leaving Hong Kong after, after two years, um, a lot has happened and uh, it just goes to show that, um, you know, the world does rely on <clears throat> travel and communicating with people in, in different uh, nations and uh, the result of that has, uh, you know, we've got some great things going on. Um, you know, I started this in this business over 30 years ago. Um, it's kind of crazy that I'm this old man really <laughs> old um, you know I uh, when I started in design in London um, you know there weren't many designers there were you know ten figureheads really you know there was uh, Tom Dixon Ron Arat um, you know in uh, um, Ross Lovegrove Matthew Hilton um, all great mavericks of design people who um, who um, really were self-initiated thinkers um, who had a vision of what they wanted to do and how they could craft the things going on in the planet at the time, which were, of course, very different um, to the way things are now. Um, um, some people they say it was easier then, some say so it's, it's more complex now. Um, um, but, you know, you know, swings and roundabouts. Um, either way, I've got to thank them for parting the water. <laughs> <laughs> and creating a pathway for me in the design world um, that, uh, you know, I was lucky, you know, I left college and started making things and um, I uh, delivered products myself, I welded them, I went to buy the materials, I posted them, I, you know, life was very different then, you know, we didn't do things uh, remotely, I had a fax machine and a pencil and, uh, you know, I still work um, very basically with my pencil. I love my pencil. That's all I've got. I don't use a computer. Um, you know. Anyway, um, so you know, my my approach design has always been very much about uh, passion. Um, it's never really ultimately been a profession for me in the sense that um, I found something that I love. I discovered it. Um, I wasn't very good at other things at school, be that math, uh, physics. Um, you know what not I fell into this as a as a creative sort of um, uh, channel um, you know I had an attempt at a lot of things at a younger age painting um, you know fashion graphic design um, but I found you know within product design I had a, a, a love of materials and shape and form and you know over time this is something that we all as designers um, have the opportunity to explore and I think um, the good thing about design is that we can only become richer with experience um, and develop and grow um, providing we put the correct foundations in place in the first place but you know if you're listening to this now um, you're obviously designing um, so you know um, I think uh, we all have a, a certain beginning in design. Um, it never has to be the same, but you know, I understand really leaving a college and I, I, you know, people just used to have the idea that they would go to design school and get a job and be working nine to five for this thing. But that whole thing is loosening up now. And I think, you know, what I love is when I come to, to Shenzhen, uh, you know, I see so many lovely little brands have developed and, you know, people have developed their own, um, own business through design and to really become full circle that's really the great 
tool that we we have available to us that we can you know we can treat uh, we don't look at a menu in, in life and go we're going to have either this this or this um, you know as designers we're with the chefs we're in the kitchen we're cooking up new things uh, we can take this we can take that and we can use this technology and we can put it with that material and there's so many different things that we can we can play with and then here's the result and hopefully this result is relevant as a consumer product and you know that's the way I've always dealt with design it's why I've designed furniture I've designed lighting I've designed electronics um, bicycles cars um, all sorts of things so you know we're entitled to this uh, this great universe of uh, opportunity and you know I think that's where industrial and design you know separates itself from a lot of other things you can do um, so anyway um, you know um, I think the the upside of um, COVID has had some incredible creating some incredible opportunities for me um, you know we started just for fun, designing electric boats in Hong Kong, and um, that's led to, you know, these, these were conceptual things, um, but that's actually led to um, one of the most important projects that I've been working on in the UK. I, I don't want to say the name of the company, but we've designed, been designing for the last six, six months um, electric vehicles, um, and we should be launching those later this year. Um, and what's important about that is this is a highly sustainable company. Um, so it's given me the opportunity to really uh, work with some great thinkers, people who've invested a lot of money in the future of the planet and uh, allowed me to interpret their business my way um, and try and create a, a sort of user interface um, for, um, you know, for me to, to work with. And uh, I think um, they're very happy with the product. We're excited because we get something uh, something new to do um, but you know you know I think it, we th there are a lot of challenges being a designer now um, and of course that's getting a project um, but I think you know we start to you know as time goes by and you build your network up of friends and colleagues um, in the industry things happen for a reason everything happens for a reason it's because the time is right um, um, and you know when the cosmos tells you the uh the time is right the opportunity generally happens and i think um that's the way nature is you know i i, I truly believe in that sort of um destiny um you know i've never really pushed too hard for saying i want to do this project um i think it's generally most things happen bumping into people recommendations having a coffee going to a design fair um, you know, I mean, I've been holed up here in the UK for five or six months now. This is my little English cave. It's dark. Um, I start work at 4.30 in the morning um, when I can think and it's really peaceful. Um, put my candles on. Everything faces north. I'm not facing north, but all my products are. I work from there, but I can't because if I film from over there, and this is the typical thing that I found during COVID, you'll see my radiator with all my sports gear on. Um, so anyway, not facing north today. My products are, um, but this is my little cave. This is where I'm printing all of my Damien Hurst NFTs. If you want to buy one, just send me an email, ping me. Um, and uh, yeah, um, so yeah, let's go back to... Um, uh, you know what will what's transcending uh, uh, in our universe um, so I think um, of course we can all design but I think um, you know this the new opportunities that I, I have been thrown at me have been really the result of um, the moves that the Chinese government have made to um, focus on improved sustainability, um, and it's now come to full, 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 full well, to fruition, shall we say, um, whereby all the products that we're working on, the factories are either um, uh, in full, full cycle of um, they've been rebuilt, um, 
meeting uh, particular standards. Um, so, you know, not only the factories and the, the waste materials that they're producing are, are, are um, sustainable, um, the materials that we're using, and slowly but surely the, the cycle of uh, how those products interface with um, the end consumer are, and be that um, whether they're delivered by um, an electrical vehicle, uh, that type of thing, that whole thing is becoming uh, full circle, you know. Um, so I'm witnessing that now and, you know, that used to be a big challenge in design and I think now that we've got over that hump we all understand what we've got to do and what our responsibilities are, you know, we can just focus on being uh, responsible with the type of things that we design and I think that's, you know, once we understand that as a, 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 a designer, we get over some of the biggest challenges, um, you know, as I said, we've got this big menu of opportunity, we just have to see how we um, slot into it and I think um, this, you know, creates the biggest opportunities for us, um, it certainly has for myself. Um, I think what's happened during COVID is we sort of sat back, a lot of supply chains um, uh, got interfered with and exhibitions around the world got delayed, products got uh, cancelled, um, projects got slowed down and it made us really think about what do we actually really need? Are we just chasing every opportunity that occurs or should we just do the things that we really need to because the world is forcing us to do that? Um, and that told me really that um, I, needed to make some decisions and with that I decided to set up my own brand. Now that's nothing new to me, someone says, oh how can you turn from a studio to your own design brand? Well it's nothing new to me because um, 30 years ago I was buying materials, I was making things, selling them, delivering them, doing my own press and blah blah blah, so it's really just going back to the beginning, to my roots and um, that brand will launch, uh, everything will be made in China, um, so we're avoiding any um, you know extra extra costs for shipping and freight and wasting materials uh, so we can actually design things uh, that are very nice for the right price in, in China um, and yeah we'll launch that soon um, I think that's probably the most important um, decision I've made in my shall we call it a career um, to date um, so I think um, That'll be my next challenge as to how to get that system up and operational. Um, but it's all a process. It looks really overwhelming when you look at it just face on and on a piece of paper. But you know what I've learned to do is just um, go through the process, work with good people. Um, you know, so I think really this could be what the future of design is. Um, it's about um, molding yourself to the planet as it changes and. Um, I think um, for me, being able to transform yourself as the world changes is something that I accept as part of design now. I used to be very uh, set in stone and this is my way of doing things, but I think um, you know the world changes, nature changes, and I think um, we have been forced to adapt, I think, as designers, um, you know, certainly in my studio. A lot of the team have been working all over the world and I used to find that really challenging because, you know, I was always the guy in the hotel room uh, in LA or, you know, Shanghai, Tokyo, blah, blah, blah. Um, but um, my team are now all floating around the planet and it's actually become really beneficial because we've got this really adaptable system, this thing that we can work with that can adapt to some really diverse situations that we've experienced over the last um, over the last two years. Um, so I think, you know, what I would say really, you know, as a, as a final message is that as designers we're lucky because we're adaptable and as long as we can, uh, we have the sort of profession that uh, gives us the, you know, the freedom to be flexible. Um, and we can change things as the world changes and that's what really uh, I think being a good designer is all about not necessarily just that little idea you have when you do a sketch um, it's about the whole you know the whole microcosmos that makes us um, design things that the world actually needs um, so all I can say is I can't wait to come to a design event
and have a drink with everyone and soon launch our beer and everyone can have one free not everyone in china everyone in the room okay i didn't say that anyway so thank you for listening and you know thank you for the organizers of this event for um inviting me to do this um i'm honored <laughs> anyway here's a happy new year to everyone cheers